couple of quick things before we get into this video. Number one, I'm celebrating one year on YouTube this week. And to celebrate, I'm gonna do a live this Friday at 11.30 Aussie time. I'll put the international times up on the screen. I'd love for you to join me. If you can't, I'm gonna do a little Q&A in that session. So if you've got a question for me, put it below this video and I'll try and get to it. Number two, I've had a lot of requests on the channel to do a review on the Cannondale System 6 and unfortunately, I just can't get my hands on it. However, Gabe Sullins, he's a very well respected man in the bike industry. He worked for Specialized actually for a number of years over in the US and now runs a bike shop in Melbourne, Urban Peddler. Uh, they do Cannondale and he actually rides the Cannondale System 6 himself. So in today's video, he's going to kindly review the bike for us. So Gabe, you're surrounded by some magnificent bikes here. Yeah. You, you wouldn't want to be riding them on a day like today out there in Melbourne. What is going on? Yeah, well, that's why you see mine sitting here all nice and clean. So this it, is yours, is it? Yeah, that's mine, but I, uh, I don't take it out on days like today. I'd rather be indoor riding some Zwift. <laughs> uh, th this, this is definitely not a bike that I take out in the crap. I want to keep it nice and pristine. Yeah, so how long have you been riding the System 6 for? So I've been on the System 6 for about three months now. Um, I've got one of the Dura-Ace Di2 models. I've got these two here. The one on the top here is the Altegra Di2 equipped version. Um, high mod frame, it's got their own custom Knot 64 wheels, which we'll talk about in a minute. Yep. And then there's a so, second... So, so when you say custom, is this a Cannondale wheel? Is this it? is a Cannondale wheel, okay. the hologram Knot 64s. Right. How long uh, have they been around for? So this was designed, these wheels were designed with this frame in mind. So you'll only be able to get these wheels as part of a package with this particular bike. Right. You're also looking at the Dura-Ace Di2 equipped version. Yep. And there's a, uh, there's a more entry level price point that's got the same frame, but it doesn't have the, the not system bar system, which is basically a one piece or two piece stem and handlebar that allows you to tuck away all the cables and hydraulic housing, right. uh, which is a really neat little system. But um, the entry level Ultegra version doesn't come with that system bar and doesn't come with the not 64 wheels, but allows you to kind of build your own with one of the most aerodynamic frames on the market. Yeah, okay, so what's the, what's the price difference roughly? Well, you start at the top of the line, 15, then 10, and then probably down around five and a half at the entry level. Yeah. There's also a frame only high mod uh, version available for people that just want to build one up on the, uh, to yeah. their own spec. And we just weighed them both, so it's about a 400 and yeah, difference? yeah. The top of the line with uh, the best crank um, and the lightest fork and wheel combination, and the lightest component um, combination in the Dura Ace is a little bit under eight kilograms, yes. and just tipping over eight kilograms for the Altegra Di2 version. Yeah. Okay. So you wanted to walk us through some of the technical specifications before you. We talked about riding experience. Yeah. Well, first of all, the this taken Cannondale a long time to come out with a design they felt was uniquely theirs and they actually came out with their first attempt at an aero road bike like this is the most aerodynamic bike on the market right now. So it's advertised as the fastest bike in the world and the the German magazine test in, uh, what's it called? I can't remember the German magazine. I should know this. That's all right. We, we can look it up and put it over the screen. Yeah, so... Um, so it was independent tests that said this was a fast... Independent tests yeah. and in-house tests proved that this was the most aerodynamic bike up to about a 6% grade. So when you're moving at speed where the aerodynamic benefit is the mo is most, if you can, if you can have an aero yeah. benefit, um, as you get going faster and faster and faster on this bike, the aerodynamic benefit starts to take off. Right, okay. So it's a very fast bike between 35 and 60 kilometers an hour. Yeah, right. So um, a couple of interesting features on it. They've widened the stance of the fork and the seat stays in the back. Compared to what other aero bikes on the market? Yep, so you have more space in between the wheel and the edge of the fork yep. and the stays in the back and the wheel to allow for a little better airflow in an area that also normally has a lot of turbulence and a lot of drag. Yeah, right. So they've widened the stance. If you look at the wheels themselves, they the the rim is wider than the tire so they looked at several different combinations of rim width and tire width to come up with the right combination that if you look parallel to the ground you end up with a true aero profile so you this is a 23c tire yeah. 
but a wider bead so it opens up the tire and creates a really good aero profile leading into a rim that's wider than the tire itself. Right. When you look down on it, it's pretty unique to see a rim that's wider than the tire. So, but does it come like a 24 or 25 mil tire then? Well, it comes with a 23 spec tire yep. and that 23 when opened up with a wider bead yep. is actually as wide and has the same bag size as a normal 25. Wow, okay. So you have a nice uh, compliant ride, but that 23 tire opened up allows it to help create that profile that they were looking for to de decrease the drag. Yep. So really unique wheel and tire combination. Yep. The, the uh, increased space and stance width on the fork and the stay yep. allows for a little better airflow through an area that's normally very turbulent. Yep. You can see how the shaping in the frame is allowing air to come back and then uh, attach, reattach and go around the frame. Aero seat, seat tube, the truncated aero profile. So you have true aero profiles with the cutoff on the back, which leaves a little room for your normal, just a regular water bottle cage. Doesn't change the aerodynamics that much. But if you look under the front end, a lot of the cables are completely hidden. So you have hydraulic hose to your front brake and rear brake and all the DI2 equipment all nicely tucked into the bar. Yeah. There's an amazing amount of drag on normal bikes from the cables. So if you can reduce the cables altogether, you can get rid of a significant amount of the drag on a bike. Yeah, okay. So a little okay. time in the wind tunnel has definitely benefited these guys. What's up here? So that section up there is where you can plug in your DI2. It's the same as here? Yep. yep. So if you've got a DI2 equipped bike, that's where everything plugs in to charge the battery that's in the seat tube. Yep. So an extremely aerodynamic bike that the faster you go, the more benefit you start to get. And uh, I'll tell you, after spending some time on mine, the first ride out, I immediately noticed that when I would be riding, our typical group speed is between 35, 38, sometimes 40, 42 kilometers an hour. Yep. And I noticed if I was taking a pull on the front at 40, I could accelerate up 42, 44, and I could hold it a little longer than I normally could hold it, yep. which was enough to frustrate some of the people I normally ride with. <laughs> I've, uh, I've talked to some other people that we've, uh, that we've sold these bikes to. And they share a similar experience with uh, frustrating some of their group riders by having a bike that's just a little bit faster. <laughs> you also notice if you are similar weight with someone that's on a, a traditional road bike, even like the Cannondale Evo, and you're rolling just down a slight grade, these bikes will pick up speed yeah. without having to go into a tuck. Right. And the guy behind, uh, beside you, same weight, similar bike, good quality bike, you'll have to be pedaling gently to kind of keep maintain that same level of speed. Yeah, okay. So really, a really cool aero position. And one of the first things you notice when you get on one of these bikes is they spec them with one size narrower handlebar, right, okay. which also brings in your frontal area. It's something that takes probably one or two rides to get used to. But on my bike, uh, I'd normally uh, buy a bike in size 54 that would come with a 42 bar. Yep. And these come with 40s. Yeah, okay. So it is something that just changes your position a little bit and brings you in and makes you just that much more aero. The combination of all those things together makes for a bike that does definitely for the first bike I can, I can remember ever having, and I've had a lot of road bikes, yeah. the first bike that I can get on and immediately feel faster. Yeah, okay. Now you rode the original Venge because you used to work with Specialized. Yep. Uh, how does, because the original Venge for me, comfort was a bit of an issue. How do these go comfort wise? Yeah, and this is a claim that Cannondale, uh, they don't even want this bike to be called an aero road bike because aero road bikes tradi traditionally are known to be fairly harsh. 50, 60, 70 kilometer rides and your body's toast from the yeah. vibration that you're getting from the road. Yeah. This is extremely compliant, more like the Evo that I was used to riding, which is known to be also very compliant. Yeah, okay. So they really took time to engineer vertical compliance into this bike while still making it very good for sprinting, um, still torsionally very stiff and very aerodynamic. So it's a unique bike in its category. Is there anything specific they've done around comfort? Like say I know the Trek Medone, I've got some technology called the ISO speed technology, which helps reduce some of that vibration. Is there anything I've done around the frame design or is- Well, if you look at some companies they're using elastomers to reduce the vibration. Yep. Uh, that's of course one very effective way to do it, but you can also do it by aligning the fibers and changing the tube shapes in areas that can bend vertically. Yeah, okay. So if you look at the shape of the chain stays and you look at the shape of the, the seat stays, the low slung seat stays, yep. allows these this area to, the, the seat tube can flex a little bit. Yep. The chain stays have a little flat section in the middle, which allows them to flex vertically as well. And by having that low slung seat stay, you basically can encourage the rear end to flex a little bit vertically, which 
takes a huge edge off of those rough bumps and edges of potholes and cracks in the pavement that you would normally feel on a road ride. Yeah, okay. So I, I can comfortably ride this. I'm planning, uh, I'm planning to do a lot of training for around the bay. I can comfortably say I could do around the bay on this. Yep. I've already done a couple 120K plus rides on it. And you'll, if you're, if I was on my old Venge or I've even had the chance to ride a giant Propel before as okay, well, yep. definitely those bikes are, the people that will own you, uh, own those bikes will also tell you the same thing, that they're not generally bikes you'd go out on an all day ride yep. and expect to come home with any level of uh, uh, comfort when you, yep. when you return home. So how's this been as a dealer? Because you sell these bikes, obviously. Um, Cannondale bringing in an aero road bike. How have you seen the uptake in the market? Well, it's it's um, traditionally, I'd say, you've got most people are riding your traditional road bike, like the Cannondale Evo. Yep. You've got people that are riding longer, more distance, a little bit of gravel or rougher roads that like the, the endurance road bike. This is definitely a smaller niche. It's growing, especially in this area where we've got beach road and they've got huge group rides. Most of the riding is flat. So you're seeing more and more people take interest in these aero style bikes for that style of ride. Yeah, cool. All right, guys, thanks for your time, mate. No problem. Climb back in your coffin. Why you really missed the grave, huh? Guess you ain't like walking and talking. And got that on repetition.